I greet one and all in Jesus' name again this lovely Lord's Day morning. It is a special day indeed, day of Pentecost. There has been much preparation for this meeting. Uh, we had our pastor, Andrew Naidu, who secured these lovely lights that you see up front, depicting the flames. We thank him for that. We had Sean and together with Maliga, they've helped to secure all of our oils that we have today that we will provide for you. They've done the labeling and we have much that is available for all of us. Then we had you church, we've made an announcement and we ask that you fast and pray and I know many of you have done that and you've come fasting and you've come praying. So we're in for a great time and above all of that, we have our Lord waiting. He said whenever you gather in his name, he is present. He is present to bless, he is present to uplift, he is present to refresh, he is present to revitalize, he is, pre he is, pre he is present to do all those great and mighty things. We're going to start off by firstly praying for the oils that we have here with us so that we can make that available for you as you take leave a little later on. We'd like to call all the elders of the church and the pastors of the church to just come forward as we would um, just lay our hands upon these oils. We know God is able to do the profound, is able to take the ordinary and change it into the extraordinary, like he did with the water, ordinary water became the new wine. And we trust in God to do something powerful with this that we have before us, that God will allow his anointing to fall and settle on these oils, that even as you take home, that you will express, you will experience a new level of refreshing, that you'll express Deliver, that you'll experience deliverance, that you'll experience uh, healing, that God will do something even as you rub these oils on your body, that something powerful and wonderful will start setting in. Therefore, we're praying in faith today that God will do the impossible. Father, we know that these are ordinary oils, but in your presence and with your help, they're going to become extraordinary. They're going to become potent power. There's going to be something of God that's going to filter down and, and cause a stir, Lord. We want results, oh God. We want the news to filter back to the church that something happened as a result of them being in obedience and being even as they applied these oils, oh God. Father, touch it, oh God. Touch it right now in Jesus' sweet name. Let your blessings pour on these oils and through these oils. And even as they would enter homes, oh God, may something profound happen. For this we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For Jesus' sake, amen and amen. Church, we live in exciting times. And I'm wanting us to look beyond where we are and understand there's excitement in the air and it is our duty to catch it while we can. Sometimes things happen around us and sometimes things are intended for us and we miss it because we've been sleeping through it. But today God is wanting us to be alert, alert as we see the signs around us, it is our season and we need to um, be available even as God wants to use us. Just to recap, we know that Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was taken down. He was laid in a tomb. Three days later, he became alive and he stayed on earth for 40 days. During that time, he said much, and one of the things he said was this, it is expedient that I go away. 
For if I don't go away, the Comforter will not come. But if I do go, I will send the Comforter, and he will abide with you forever. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit, and Jesus mentioned that he wants to come, and he wants to stay with us always. Then Jesus told on the day of the, the day that he was going to ascend into heaven, he said that they needed to be together, that they needed to be in Jerusalem, and that they needed to wait for the promise of the Father. The Father had made a promise, and the Father had appointed a time, and Jesus was bringing to the attention of the disciples that that appointed time was near, and he asked them to meet. It was all about a meeting. They needed to meet in a specific spot in Jerusalem, in the upper room, for the promise of the Father. Jesus said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. God was wanting to turn the tide. God was wanting to do something new. God was wanting to do something different. God was wanting to empower his people. He was wanting to give them extraordinary strength and insight. And he said that they will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon them and they shall become tremendous witnesses. And we know that... Um, that that power became available. It was power, transforming power. It was healing power. It was protecting power. It was devil defeating power. We know with it they were able to reach heights. They, we know that they were able to have the breakthroughs. We know that they were able to bring into being that which were not. We know that they were able to tread on serpents. And we know that with that power, they could allow God to rise and the enemy be scattered. You have that power. You have that authority. And today, we're going to have more of that power and more of that authority. Because God is wanting us to be the head and not the tail. God is wanting us to be winners and no more losers. God is wanting us to be victors and not victims. God is telling us today that this final day encounter is going to be the power is going to be the final day where power is going to be present. And he said that in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit. Is today the last days? It is. And now is the time that Jesus spoke about then. We... Uh, let's start by reading that portion that we've heard earlier on in our invocation, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 onwards. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and fill the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them cloven tongues of fire and sat, sat on each and every one of them. This was an event that John the Baptist spoke about. He said, there is one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose or tie, he shall baptize you with the fire and with the Holy Spirit. And this is the event that John the Baptist spoke about, the baptism of fire and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They needed to be together. This was the meeting place. Over all of the centuries, this was the designated time, and this was the designated place. They needed to meet. 
And I'm glad today that we have a large number that have come to meet with God. Sometimes we have our own views as to how we would like to have things done. But God thinks a little differently, and this is what God said, that they needed to be all together. They needed to be all in one place. They needed to be all in one mind. And when we are in that position, then we fulfill the condition that is required for the infilling, being in one place, in one mind, being in unity. And that is exactly what had happened that day. There were over 500 really that had walked over after the ascension and they gathered there at the upper room and slowly some of them walked away because the day, the waiting period was 10 days. They didn't know it was going to be that long. And they couldn't stand the wait. And some of them had business to do. Some of them had stuff that they needed to attend to urgently. And they just drifted away. But the Bible says that just 120 of them waited. 120 waited earnestly. 120 waited expectantly. And 120 received from God. The Bible says that the heavens opened, there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and cloven tongues of fire rested on every one of them and they all spoke in tongues. Now when we mention tongues in this passage and when tongues are mentioned in other portions of this Bible, there is a twofold meaning to the tongues. And this scripture, as you'll read further on, will, will, will um, uh, identify what I'm trying to mention, what I'm trying to say here today. Firstly, you have tongues as a language. And these people that heard it, heard it as a language. And they were able to get saved because they heard their dialect through these tongues. But then you have the tongues also as an angelic voice or an angelic message, or an angelic language. And, and, and God wants us to also use those languages so that we can confuse the enemy. So the enemy is not aware of what we're talking about. And so today I'm hoping that there will be many that will just open up and start just talking in tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. I'm aware that it is not something that you are personally wanting to do, but it is the Spirit that will come upon you and the Spirit will give you utterance. You'll suddenly found, find your mouth moving, your tongue moving. You'll find, suddenly find words coming in that you cannot understand. You don't know where it came from. But it is God now dealing with you and it has you on a private line. God has all of us on his private line. We have a secret code and God uses tongues as one of those codes. And I, and I trust that many of us would, would, would start praying in tongues and, and, and enjoying the wonderful um, uh, passage or wonderful messages that God has wanted to give us. Now what was the prophecy of the whole time? This is what the prophecy of the whole time as prophesied by prophet Joel. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. God was giving, going to pour out of his spirit he was going to share himself. And he was going to touch all flesh. He says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. On your servants and handmaidens, I will pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy. What is this all about? What is this all about? 
God was trying to show that he was supreme, that he was mighty, and he was wanting to impart to us that are fragile, that are weak, that are inadequate. He was wanting to impart to us some of himself, some of his power, so that we can become greater than what we are, greater than who we are, that we can become greater than our enemy, we can great, become greater than our weaknesses, so that we can become strong stalwarts in the field. And with the power of God, great and mighty things can be done. 120 signifies the end of all flesh. So, when the 120 gathered in the upper room, it was also a sign where God was saying, I'm done with the flesh. Let's go into the divine. And God poured out his spirit. And when you see the pattern of those that were filled by the spirit of God, you will see the changes in their lives. They became tremendous people of God simply because of what the Spirit done. It is not about you. It is not about what you have. It is not about your capacity. It is not about your intelligence. It is not about your giftings. It is not about your abilities. It is about what the Spirit is able to do in and through every one of us if we allow Him to. And we find that in Ephesians 4, 6, it says, there is one God and one Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. God is wanting at this time to come in, is wanting to take control of our lives, is wanting to take us by the hand, and is wanting us to take us through the treacherous part that is before us. And I know that as we wait on him today, as we call on him today, as we pray to him today, as we open up ourselves to him today, something profound is going to happen. What you're going to do in a short while is that we're going to Get engaged, you can engage in a whole lot of singing and worship. And even as you do that, you set the atmosphere for God's presence to come upon you. And I'm wanting all of us today to be focused on what is required. And even as you become focused, great things are going to happen. I'm convinced that this is going to be a new season for all of us, including me. I've done a little poem some while ago called New Season for Me, and I thought it's just fitting that I should read it at this time, just before we get into worship. After months of preparation, we have come a long way. We want to hear a word what does the Lord say? We have a made up mind. Want to give up the hold. Better go with the new. This we are told. Going to happen soon. As to be in this place. Here yeah, the presence of God. Will be able to trace. Many a saint today. Will readily bow. With no question asked. No wonder how that God Almighty will reach down low with all his spirit, his presence to show. The thirsty souls will find the drink to quench their hearts and make them think. They will understand it was the word they must not check. They have heard. To attend to this message, we dare not wait. Don't be like others, don't leave it late. 
for mischief has a habit of deceiving the mind that many go wayward, easy to find. We're going to listen, we're going to heed. We know what's wanted, we know the need. We're going to rise, no more to keep. Going to scatter the seeds for the harvest to reap. We found our purpose, why we were born, to touch many lives before we've gone. Excuses we have, many more can be found. Like-minded people are always around. But it's time to change, it's my season. This is the meeting place, I come for a reason. But it's time for change, it's my season. This is the meeting place. I come for a reason. I'm going to look up, going to hold that hand, shifting my gaze with him to stand. No more turning back, nor sitting down still, ready to get up, wanting him to fill. I hear his voice. I hear his call. Wanting to commit to my life, give him my all. This is your meeting place, church. You're not here by mistake. I don't know how you came, but you're here. This is your meeting place and you've stuck here. And we, I trust nobody leaves this place till the meeting is over. You are here. And Almighty God is here. He's going to do a shaking. He's going to do a shifting. He's going to do a repositioning. He's going to do some things with you today. Because he has you all for himself. And I'm hoping today that you'll say it's my season. I give you my everything, Lord. Take me, make me, melt me, mold me, shape me, fill me. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Here's my cup. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Won't you fill my cup, Lord, till it overflows? We'll ask the band to come over, even as we engage in some singing. And praying, praise his name, praise the name.
church something has happened here today. The Spirit has visited. The Spirit has settled. The Spirit has touched. The Spirit has set apart. You know more what you used to be. You've now called out. You've now set apart. You've now selected. You've now chosen by God to be part of Him. God's now installed in you a new mechanism. The power from heaven. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the fire of God burning inside of you. You know what the same. You may look the same, but you know what the same. I want to tell you today that you know more the same because God has touched you and God has called you as part of His own. I want you to just raise your hands together as you come to today. Say, Father, thank you for today. Say, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you for filling us. Thank you for causing that fire to burn inside us. We want to walk out of here as people on fire for God. And we're going to allow nothing to put it off. Bless us now, Lord. May we remain blessed because you blessed us, Lord. Be our portion in everything. Praise his name. Let me say the benediction and now may the grace of God, the love of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit, bless you with you always, even till Jesus comes. Amen. God bless you, church.